Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, when you sent the 72 out to heal the sick and raise the dead, you said that you saw Satan fall like lightning from the sky. And so we look at those words and we think, boy, if only we had the power to do that. But your church does. Every time we baptize someone, every time we pray for someone, every time we receive the sacrament, every time we hear your word, every time the words of forgiveness are pronounced over your people, we are healed and Satan falls like lightning from the sky. What a beautiful sight that is. So today as we go about sharing your healing together, may Satan fall that Jesus may rise up more and more powerful and more beautiful in our lives. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, um, it's interesting. So uh, this past week I, I was in Illinois uh, visiting a church, as some of you know. And if you don't know, well, now you do. And so I was there visiting. And... You know, I've always had this, well, not always. In the last several years, there's been this transformation that's been happening in me um, that has focused more on love. Because God is love, right? And one of the things that I've realized, and I saw this last week as I was with the people in Illinois, and I've seen it here, and I've seen it at other churches I've, uh, I've visited, and we see it in Christianity in general, is that there are some really bad, crappy, abusive pastors out there who don't know to love how, to, how to love people. There are some really bad, crappy pastors out there that have beat people down for too many years. And I am in shock. And there are still really bad, crappy pastors out there that get up in front of their congregations every Sunday and tell them how bad they are and what they need to be doing and never tell them they love them and that they're loved by Jesus. And my heart is broken. For that, I apologize because I'm part of this clergy thing. And rightfully so in the Missouri Synod, we're not very good at telling people they're loved. We're better at telling you how you should be doing things and why than we are going around and telling you you're loved and forgiven. That seems to be the climate of our synod today. I could go into the reasons why, but I'm on camera, so I won't. But one of the things I realized deeply is that the only way people can be healed, whether that be illness or mental illness, or worry, or fear, or struggle, or marital problems. The only way people can be healed is through the love of Jesus. People desperately need to know they are loved. That Jesus sees beyond our faults. He sees beyond our past. He sees beyond our wrongdoings. And he loves us despite them. We need churches to be places of refuge where we can go that even when we make mistakes, and let's be quite honest, churches aren't very good at this, especially to their pastors. Churches are at fault too because pastors make mistakes and then you have people who hold it against them and hold grudges for the rest of their being. And you listen to St. James today, that's sinful and wrong. And if you hold a grudge, in my opinion, you don't have love. And in my opinion, you can't truly really be a Christian if you hold a grudge. But that's just my opinion based on Scripture. But let's be honest. If churches can't be places of love where we love each other and look beyond our faults and celebrate our faults and celebrate the fact that we too are loved together by Jesus, people can't be healed. And we sit back and we wonder, why is the Christian church in the United States dying? Why aren't people being healed and restored every day? Well, if you look at our churches from the outside, I don't have to really give you that answer. It is very obvious that the Christian church in the United States today has become a place that's more focused on telling you how you should be living your lives, how much money you should be giving, what you should not be doing, and how to be happy without Jesus on your own than truly loving Jesus people where they are in the midst of their sinfulness. 
That's sad. You know, these call processes make you think a lot. And that's the one thing I've really realized is that the church is really sad nowadays. It's sad because we've forgotten to love each other. And more importantly, we've forgotten that Jesus loves us. The biggest message we need to hear every moment, every day of our lives is that we are loved and forgiven children of God, sealed in the cross, guaranteed through the resurrection of Jesus, given to us by baptism, received in the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, and proclaimed to us every time we hear the word. We need every day to be immersed in this healing, loving, compassionate word of God so much so that we literally lose bits of ourself and our faith when we're not. Because it leaves room for Satan to attack us. To put shame into our lives. To put doubt and fear. The opposite of healing. So you may think, well, and some of you can tell by the crowd today that there aren't many people like the healing service apparently. But that's okay. I think it's important. And I hope you do too because you're here today. Because yes, we do want God to heal us. After all, I do believe in miracles that God can heal our illness and he does, right? We've all seen it happen in miraculous ways. God is God. He does what he wants to. We've all seen it happen. And don't forget that sometimes death is the ultimate healing to our sickness. I just had a conversation on the way back from the air to the airport yesterday in St. Louis. You know, and somebody said, well, I've been praying that, that this person would be healed and they died and that wasn't healing. And I said, oh, oh, but they were healed. That's the ultimate healing, right? But healing goes so much farther than that. When we come up for these healing services and when you pray and when we're anointed with oil in the shape of the cross on our forehead, it points us to our baptism. And it reminds us that we have been anointed from on high with the power of the Holy Spirit who keeps us in Jesus Christ himself. Who makes us a child of God. Who gives to us his kingdom by virtue of that baptism. Who assures us that our past and our present and our future means nothing to him because we are his loved and forgiven and redeemed children. First and foremost in healing, we need the love of God to seep into our lives by any means possible. I believe that. We cannot stop hearing how much God loves us because when we do, it leaves room for Satan to work his shame, for those negative voices to tell us we're bad people, we aren't good parents, we aren't good children, we're not good at our work, we're failures, and you know the rest of the story that goes on in your head. But God in his infinite mercy and his wonderful grace comes to us in so many different ways to pour out that love and that grace and that healing into our lives to restore us and to remind us that above everything else in all creation, we mean so much to him that he will do everything to keep us always in his presence, to love us, and to forgive us. And remember the words of Romans 8. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I don't know about you, but those are perhaps the most healing words that we can ever hear, right? There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So there are many people today, and maybe some of you that struggle sometimes with loving yourself, with loving other people, with loving your spouse, with loving God. And we all do at some point or another, and if you don't admit that, well, then you're kind of fooling yourself. My hope today is that as you receive the Lord's Supper and take the time to pray, whether that's individually in your seats or to pray with me, 
that one message will become loud and clear in your lives. That the greatest gift in all the world, which is God, and God is love, has already been given to you and poured out into your hearts by virtue of your baptism. And there is nothing, as St. Paul says, in all creation that will ever change that love of God for you. Nothing. May those words be healing to your bones and your marrow and your flesh, that you may leap with joy in sharing his love with a world around us that desperately, desperately needs us to be the love of Jesus. In his name, amen.